Hello folks, Rod Machado here. Do you know what the best gig in the world is? It's being a meteorologist in Palm Springs, California. Why? Because the weather is always good in Palm Springs, California. And what you do is you get on TV, give the five-year forecast, and take the next half decade off vacationing in Cancun. Oh sure, it does get a little warm out there in August. In fact, uh, in August, birds have been known to fall from the sky fully cooked. Well, the fact is that meteorology is an interesting subject. It's a fascinating subject. And what makes it so interesting to me is that you can understand almost any aspect of meteorology if you know a few very simple principles. For instance, I'm going to show you a segment on the low level jet stream. Now this is something that is, uh, well, it's a mystery to some pilots and it's just, it just seems impenetrable. But you can actually understand this if you understand just two things and that happens to be one, heat, and the next one is the Coriolis force. Understand how these two things interact and you can understand the low level jet stream. This is an excerpt from my 5.5 hour interactive animated e-learning course on understanding weather. If you're interested in this course, visit rodmachado.com or becomeapilot.com. So here's a segment on the low level jet stream. I hope you enjoy it. The low level jet stream. Certainly you've heard of the jet stream, which is not a silvery jet aircraft built to look like a hostess Twinkie. That's an air stream, which is for camping out. Instead, the jet stream is a band of high altitude winds formed along the polar front moving from west to east in the northern hemisphere. These high altitude winds are primarily responsible for directing the movement of storm systems across the United States. There are, however, lower level bands of high speed winds that form in the Great Plains region and in the southeastern United States. Called the low level jet stream, these high speed winds are commonly found at 5,000 feet MSL or the 850 millibar pressure level. And remember that 1013.2, 1013.2 millibars is standard pressure for sea level. Now, the velocities of these low level jet streams range from 25 to 50 knots or 40 to 70 knots depending on which type of low level jet stream has formed. Which type? Yep, there are actually two types of low level jets, so let's discuss each. The nocturnal low level jet stream. As you probably know by now, all wind is a result of a pressure differential, otherwise known as a pressure gradient force. Now this pressure differential results in winds flowing from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. This coupled with the effects of the Coriolis force are the two factors primarily responsible for the low level jet stream. So here's how it works. First, you need a large pressure differential which is commonly found in the evening and early morning hours in the Great Plains. With large mountains to the west, think the Rockies, and lowering terrain to the east, you create a perfect opportunity for pressure differentials to exist. Now this figure shows a geographic profile of this area during the day with the 850 millibar or 5000 foot pressure level resting parallel to the horizon. Anywhere along this line represents 5,000 feet above sea level. Remember, the terrain to the west slopes upward, which is why Denver, Colorado is called the Mile High City. As a general rule, the air is cooler to the west for two reasons. First, the terrain at a higher altitude is cooler and there's less moisture at higher altitudes to help the air retain daytime heating. And this is why you can visit Denver and, after only a few hours, your nose sounds like Zamfir, master of the pan flute. On the other hand, the area around the Great Plains is geographically lower and more humid, resulting in a deeper layer of warmer air due to daytime surface heating. Said another way, the area around the Western Plains can heat up and cool down quicker compared to the area around the Eastern Plains, which takes longer to heat up but also takes longer to cool down. 
As the sun sets, the terrain in the western plains cools relatively quickly while the terrain to the east radiates its surface heat away more slowly. Therefore, during the evening hours, the air above the western plains becomes colder compared to the air above the eastern plains area, which retains more of its daytime radiant heat longer. Now, let's establish a line from right to left representing the 850 millibar or 5,000 foot MSL level with point A over the eastern plains, the right side of the diagram, while point B is over the western plains, the left side of the diagram. Anywhere along the line, from point A to point B, the outside pressure is 850 millibars. Flying at this precise pressure level results in your airplane's altimeter reading 5,000 feet MSL. From your study of altimetry, you know that the differences in air temperature over a large area results in a gradual sloping or tilting of pressure levels. After all, a column of colder air in the western plains is compressed slightly, and a column of warmer air in the eastern plains expands slightly in the vertical direction. Therefore, the pressure level at which your altimeter reads 5,000 feet when these temperature differences exist actually slopes downward slightly when flying toward the colder air and raises slightly when flying toward warmer air. As evening progresses, the temperature difference between the air in the west and the air in the east often results in a sloping pressure level. Now, this might result in a sufficient pressure differential to cause air to flow from east to west. How so? Well, if we move horizontally from right to left, we see that point A is below the sloped 850 millibar pressure level, while point B is above this pressure level. Now think about what that means. It means that the pressure at point A might be 875 millibars, which is higher than 850 millibars, while the pressure at point B might be 811 millibars, which is certainly lower than 850 millibars. We know that this difference in pressure results in the generation of wind flowing from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. Therefore, air moves from point A to point B which results in the horizontal airflow shown here. This creates an easterly wind blowing westward. Remember, we always speak of wind blowing from some place or from the east in this instance. The greater the slope of the 850 millibar pressure level, the greater the difference in pressure and the faster the air flows from point A to point B. But wait, we also learned that wind is curved to the right by the Coriolis force. This means that the wind generated by this pressure gradient is curved to the right as it heads west. And this eventually turns the wind into a southerly wind. In other words, wind blowing from the south toward the north as a result. And this is what becomes known as the low level jet stream. Examined over a large geographical area, this low level jet stream can flow in a northerly direction for hundreds and hundreds of miles. This ribbon of fast moving air is strongest in the early morning hours. Now why the early morning hours? Well, the air above the western plains has cooled down quickly during the evening while the air over the eastern plains still retains a lot of the heat acquired during the previous day. This can create an early morning surface based temperature inversion over the eastern plains. Now it shouldn't be a surprise that should a strong surface-based inversion develop, the warmer air above the cooler surface air will flow with much less ground frictional effects. Remember, the upper layer of warmer air in an inversion doesn't want to mix with the cooler air near the surface. This means the air velocities associated with the nocturnal low-level jet can reach speeds of 50 knots at 1,000 feet above ground level. It's even possible to have surface winds at the base of the inversion at 3 to 4 knots with 40 plus knots of wind at 1,000 feet above ground level. And just imagine the wind shear that you can expect when making an approach to an airport under these conditions. Because surface-based inversions tend to break up as the day progresses, 
the low-level jet stream also tends to dissipate during daytime hours. Additionally, the west-to-east temperature gradient tends to reverse itself during the daytime hours, thereby removing the primary cause of the pressure differential that generated the low-level jet stream in the first place. The second type of low-level jet stream is known as the cyclone-induced low-level jet. And by cyclone, we mean air that's associated with low pressure centers or counterclockwise air circulation. Now that you understand the principle on which the nocturnal low-level jet forms, you can easily understand how low-level jet streams can form in the warm air ahead of an advancing cold front. The exact same principle of pressure differential is involved here. For instance, this graphic shows a cross-section of a cold front moving from west to east, and we know that the area ahead of the cold front, point B, has lower pressure, and this is why the pressure falls when a front approaches. Therefore, the area to the east of the cold front, point A, is higher in pressure. This results in the same tilting of the 850 millibar pressure level as we experienced with the nocturnal low-level jet. And the difference here is that instead of temperature causing the tilt of the 850 millibar pressure level, it's the difference in surface pressure that causes the 850 millibar pressure level to lower toward point B and raise toward point A. The result is the development of a cyclone-induced low-level jet stream that flows parallel to and moves with the cold front. If the tilting 850 millibar pressure level is affected by both the high and low pressure centers associated with the front and exacerbated by any west-east air temperature differential as previously described, then the speed of this low-level ribbon of air can reach speeds of 70 knots at the 850 millibar or 5,000 foot MSL level. And depending on the terrain, that could mean that you have winds at 70 knots, 1,000 feet above the ground. Cyclone-induced low-level jet streams are also found in the area of the Great Plains as well as the southeastern United States. What makes these cyclone-induced low-level jets so interesting is that they typically bring warmer, moister air from the Gulf of Mexico inland, often feeding the storm system with which they are associated. This cyclone-induced low-level jet acts as a conveyor belt of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And this moisture increases the instability of the air being lifted by the cold front. If you have ever wondered why the area around the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma is called Tornado Alley, now you know why.